So being that this is kind of just my and this is like this thing I'm leaving behind. This little anthology, as you as one may put it, of just my journey through films and television and content creation, storytelling. And, you know, over the course of, you know, many years, there have been some, you know, really piss poor movies that have come out, some shows that have ended before we kind of wanted. And then there's often a sort of gem, a sort of unspoken hero in in the depths of weirdness and completely random storytelling that, you know, had not been done before and has not been done since simply because, yeah, just because it's unique and it's never been done before doesn't necessarily mean it needs to continuously be, I guess, revered. You know, that's why we have, you know, th- movies that eventually become cult classics. You know, they're movies that completely bomb when they sort of come out and then build up a following over many, many years. I'm not saying these films are what I'm talking about. What I'm saying is that these films land in the realm of obscurity to such a high degree that it is incomprehensible to think that it exists right now. Granted, the first one came out 15, 16 years ago. We're talking about Crank. This is a film from 2006 with Jason Statham. Now, it's got a couple of side people in it that may or may not, you know, matter to you, you know, Dwight Yoakam, Amy Smart, whatever, whatever. You know, it's got people that are mostly side characters in many other movies, but the focus is, of course, the fact that it's, it's Jason Statham, and it's a Jason Statham you know, trademark for anybody who really is a fan of his and a fan of a lot of his movies. Most of his movies land in this kind of obscure area where unless you're a fan of his, you don't see it. And most of the time they're not mainstream, I guess you could say, you know, not everything is the expendables. And this is definitely just him doing sort of whatever the hell he wants you know, sort of on this, like, Nicolas Cage kind of tour where he's just doing whatever whatever movie that comes his way and he just sees the script and he goes, fuck yeah, I'm going to do this. You know, Nicolas Cage is at that point in his career where he can do that. Jason Statham has been doing that since the beginning of his fucking career. And this is just a huge point that just drives that home. Crank. Okay, so, how do I explain Crank? The idea of Crank is that Jason Statham is this hitman. Because, of course, why, why, when is he not a hitman? So he's a hitman, and there's this people who are part of this, like, this cartel or this mafia or something. And, like, he did a hit for them. And then, like, it was one of those betrayal-type scenarios where you think, oh, it's very basic, you know. They hire him, he does the hit, and then they betray him. But how they betray him is really what it is, because essentially what, like, the leader of this gang does is he shoots him with this sort of adrenaline drug of some kind that's meant to, like, speed up his heart to the point where he's going to die. But now the only way to kind of fight this sort of poison, this drug running through his veins, is to keep himself going and how he keeps himself going is things like injecting himself with um what's the thing that's a shot of adrenaline i want to say it's just adrenaline but i believe there's a there's a shot of some kind that is what it's called that's completely escaping my mind but like he shoots himself up with that he electrocutes himself he does these like death defying things that are meant to keep his heart going because his heart starts to slow down if he's not in constant motion. So the whole point is that the entire movie, the entire 80 minute movie is all just him running as fast as he can doing the most obnoxious shit in the world when it comes to that idea of how he's going to die any second now, unless he, keeps his heart going as fast as it possibly can (laughs) so it's just meant to be like like this adrenaline rush of a film now you would think okay uh, that sounds like a good idea and eventually it should lead to 
the uh, eventual ending that we're all assuming is how it ends. And that's, you know, he's going to die. Eventually he's going to slow down and his heart's going to give out because he can't possibly go that fast for that long. I think the entire movie takes, takes place over the course of an 80 minute movie. It's not more than a day, but I want to say it's definitely at most 10 hours, you know, I think is kind of the course it's meant to sort of be like he wakes up with it and then he's just fighting all day, just beating the crap out of people and and doing just like eight balls full of coke in seconds just so he can get that fucking push forward and he just keeps going and he just murders this guy, his whole gang. And it gets to the point where you think that it's going to end, but of course, about three years later, there's a sequel. And the sequel is Crank High Voltage in 2009. Why is it called Crank High Voltage? Well, I'm going to tell you why it's called Crank High Voltage. At the end of Crank, yes, he does sort of die. How he dies is he finally gets the boss guy who um, drugged him up. They're in a plane. He throws... Jason Statham grabs the guy and he throws the, the two of them out of the plane. And he's, like, beating the crap out of him in midair while they're like skydiving but they don't have parachutes so he's just falling and as he's falling he kills him and then he realizes okay i got my revenge now i'm gonna like let myself die and i think he actually calls his girlfriend in midair and like he's leaving her this really heartfelt message while like he's watching the clouds as they sort of ascend away from him as he (laughs) faster and faster descends from the sky into the street level crashes into a car, bounces off and hits the pavement, and it ends on a scene of his face, and you think he's dead, but then it's this, you know, his eye blinks and there's a heartbeat thing where boom, 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 like a like a heartbeat machine. So that's how that movie ends. So you're like, oh, maybe they'll do a sequel. What could they possibly do for a sequel of this film? Well, I'm going to tell you, Crank High Voltage is just as fucking obnoxious because they're able to save his life even after the drug. So they flush out his system of the drug, and then they still can't really get his body up and running. So they, like, hook him up to this colostomy bag car battery type thing that he just has protruding out of his, like, stomach. It it looks like a colostomy bag, but it also looks like a tiny, like, workman's battery that they would use to, like like manage the lighting when they, when they're doing like grout work at night on a, on an open, on an open wall building. And he's now on this path of murdering more people. And the only way he can stay alive is if he keeps the battery charged. And now he's doing the most bizarre shit to keep the battery charged and to keep his, his blood pumping and to keep himself alive. And that's an even crazier story that I don't even remember off the top of my head. Well, I, I, is crank, I don't know if Crank 2 is the one, because it continues, not all of the story, it is a different um, storyline as far as, because he, he eventually gets like the best of all the people in the first one. But I know Dwight Yoakam comes back, I know Amy Smart comes back, Amy Smart comes back uh, as the girlfriend. There is this really bizarre scene where he decides that in order to get his blood pumping, he starts having sex with her in the middle of a restaurant and everybody's watching and she's like not about it. But then she realizes how much her blood is pumping. So she's joining in and then he's like, yeah, I got enough energy. And he kind of just leaves her there naked and he's running with he's running with his like his pants halfway down and his shirt open. And he's like, I got to catch the bus. And he just leaves her in the middle of the restaurant. I can't remember if that's the first one or the second one, but it's just this is these are just so these are such whacked out movies and they cannot be part of anybody's sort of filmography besides jason statham i cannot see what anybody else could have done when it came to this really really con i I don't even know what other words i can use besides completely out of this world storyline this completely out of the world concept this really is the epitome of that joke that gets floating around you know the 
the the pitch meeting for a movie and it's you know a bunch of hollywood execs executives and they're and they're sitting at a desk and the guy comes in he's like i got this great idea for a movie and he does a line of coke and it's like picture this and he just explains good movies the most bizarre way possible but like he explained this film and they're like, we're doing exactly what this, what this guy just said with that. He wanted this film to be. I'm really shocked that there was two of these and you know, granted they were successful, you know, they're still part of anybody who's a Jason Statham fans library. I'm pretty sure I have both of these movies. I have a very strange and random list of Jason Statham movies simply because, you know, I love just about everything he does. You know, I'm not talking bad about Crank in the sense that I don't like Crank. I'm talking about Crank in the way that Crank should be spoken about. It has to be spoken in this kind of way that, yes, this does not make sense, but I'm here for it. Sign me up, take my money, but don't ever do this again. (laughs) There's no reason to do a a Crank 3 or anything like that. Like, he has these two films, The Mechanic, um... That also has a sequel. I think they're like five or six years apart from each other. And like that's a film that's like, okay, he returned to that one at some point and gave it a sequel. There's a lot of really, I don't want to say like under budget films, but more like independent films that don't really get high praise or or high quality marketing that you really just have to be willing to go out and look for these films to find. Like there's a really good one. From, I want to say, maybe 2010, 2009. It was around the time, I think after the third Transporter. I can't remember exactly how, where it was. I don't remember if it was, it was definitely after the, the he was done with the Transporter series. But I don't know of how, how where it falls and when he was doing like the Expendables. But it's called Homefront. This was a straight-to-streaming film that I heard about, and just seeing, like, the cover of it, it's just Station Statham and, um, what's his name, James Franco. And I was just like, okay, I'm gonna give this a shot. And it's got, like, Winona Ryder, and it's got a bunch of people in it. And, again, this is just one of these random films that you're not gonna know about unless you know about him and you're willing to look for his stuff. I can go even further back. I can go back to 2000 and... It was definitely the years for some of these movies is escaping me. Hold on, let me look up his his thing for a second. I had it open a second ago. Where is it? Where is it? No, it's not Parker. It's not Parker. It's the one where he's It's the one where he's a he's a homeless veteran that Oh, I forgot he was in the one with Jet Li. I totally forgot about that. That was around the time he did Snatch. Jason Statham, Jason Statham. Where, where is this film in his filmography now? This is bothering me. Safe? No, it's not safe. It's not Parker. It's after Homefront, I'm guessing? That's surprising. I don't remember this film being after Homefront. Why is this not popping up on his filmography? This is very strange. Okay, hold on. Maybe the Wikipedia is all out of whack. Let me go to the actual IMDb. I have to find this movie now because this is actually one of my, I want to say, favorite of sort of the random Jason Statham movie simply because, like, there's there's just this way about how they do the story that I find just really appealing. And I have to find it because it's going to bother me now that I don't find it and I don't give it its due... Redemption, that's what it's called. Redemption. It's from 2013. Redemption is this really good... Maybe I should do a separate entry about Redemption. But Redemption is about this um, this ex-marine, uh, this soldier who's kind of homeless. He finds his way into this, like, guy... This rich guy's penthouse in London. And he learns that the guy just doesn't come to that a lot. So he kind of now lives there. And he gets back on his feet... By just living in this guy's house and just having access to things, you know, a place to sleep, a place to shower, you know, food, somewhat kind of money and being able to actually, you know, get back on his feet. And this whole story about how he goes back to like these homeless people and he tries to get them some justice because the homeless are getting abused in this township in London. It's a very good film. Redemption is a very good film. 
Um, but yeah, this this isn't necessarily just meant to be a Jason Statham um, tribute post. It really is just meant to be about Crank. But you can't talk about Crank and not talk about how much you appreciate Jason Statham for what he does and what he kind of has given us as far as the films he's put out in in history. So I, I love Crank. I love Jason Statham. Uh, I should watch Crank 2 again now that I have realized I don't necessarily remember it all the way. But, you know, it's just one of those films that you really only need to watch once, I think. Unless you just really find something appealing about it that you can watch it over and over again. Because it's just such a whacked movie. And, I don't know, I don't feel like it's talked about enough. And maybe I'm the only one that'll talk about it now for a couple more years. And maybe eventually somebody will stumble across it and go... What the fuck is this? Why is the guy that did the Megalodon movie <laughs> just running around like a madman because he's high on fucking drugs and attached to a car battery? It's just so random. <laughs>